first, we believe that everybody should sing, but also that um, learning how to learn about another culture's music is one of the best ways that you can learn how to connect with anybody and show respect for and learn to listen better and then potentially learn how to work together with. Um, so this is something that is thinking about it from a sort of business model and a leadership um, lens is, is totally fascinating and opens uh, up a whole new world in terms of how you think about this kind of music making. And we're going to teach you guys songs, but then stop periodically to kind of process what we've talked about. And I, I highly encourage you to ask questions. If you think there's some way in which something that we've said or something that you've done connects to the idea of thinking about leadership or working together or anything that's relevant to what you're studying, let us know at any time, because we can then go more in that direction and talk about it more in depth. Um, Patty. One of the things of uh, singing is, uh, as you know, your voice is a very personal part of yourself. And singing, you may probably all have sung as children. You sing in the shower. You sing in the car with the windows open or closed. <laughs> um, and But when you sing with other people, it's a great leveler and it's a great way to touch the humanity and kind of a universal truth in each other. Because you're exposed, you don't have a keyboard in the way, you don't have a camera in the way, you don't have a notepad, you're simply joining your voices. And when you sing in harmony, the role of singing in harmony is not to sing parallel, but to support each other. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whether you're a lower voice or a higher, you have the melody or the harmony, when you're singing in harmony, it's the sum of the parts. And the individuals don't really count as much as what you do personally to help everyone else sound good. And if that's not a great model for working in a business, I don't know what it is. <laughs> whether you're a leader, whether you have experience or not, when you're singing in a choir, everyone wants to make everyone else sound great. And you're just part of the group and you have your roles. You might be a soloist, you might be in a, only in the choir, you might be one of us directing, but it's a group activity and everyone has to step forward to do it. Um, and we hope that you'll enjoy that part of it today. It's fearlessness, <laughs> it's not about being pretty, it's about making a group sound and honesty. And I think that's what we love about folk music as opposed to composed music. Um, that's what we seek out uh, in the world, and that's kind of our specialty, even though Molly is a, a Western um, choral conductor of you know, the, the highest level. <laughs> Doing this folk music is, is something that you really feel like, as I say, you touch something universal in yourselves and in, in the cultures. So that's, we're hoping that you get a sense of that and that we make joyful noise together today. So we want to start with uh, a song. This is uh, South African choral music is like my first love. And um, I first fell in love with it when I was really growing up. But then when I was a teenager, I got to go to South Africa right after the first democratic elections, after the fall of apartheid. And I feel like that was a truly uh, life-changing moment because I got to see how music, choral music specifically, um, was used both as a tool during the anti-apartheid struggle, a tool to educate people, spread information, mobilize people to take action, protest the government's oppressive policies, provide comfort and support to those who are suffering, preserve cultural identity amidst oppression, all of these things. But then those same songs were being used to unify the country just a few years later. And that was just mind blowing, to see that you could both use music to tear something down, but also then to rebuild it, and the same songs. And it was really just the most incredible experience. It also taught me a lot about how you learn music from other cultures, and how important it is to um, both to do it with respect and authenticity, but also to not hold back and just go there. And it's one of the things that Patty is 
the best at in terms of teaching. She'll say to people, I want you to do a cruel imitation of me. And she means it. <laughs> you know, when people say, well, how can I learn to sing these styles of music? I'm not vocally trained. It does not matter. The way you do it is you listen to somebody doing it and you imitate the sound they make. That is what you do. So you don't have to worry about how you're lifting your soft palate or what you're doing with your diaphragm. Real singers do not think about those things when they are trying to learn other cultures' music. So really, throw any um, worries that you have about, I don't have proper training, out and just do what we do and it will work. So this particular song, Asimbonanga, is, um, it's, by, it's actually by a white South African named Johnny Clegg who was very daring and brave during the uh, apartheid years. He constantly defied the government and insisted on singing uh, and performing with black artists, which was not permitted. And he actually fell in love with the music of Zulu migrant laborers from the time he was a small child and would constantly sneak onto the barracks and listen to the migrant laborers performing these traditional Zulu dances. He was constantly being pulled away by the police. They couldn't arrest him. He was too young. Um, but he spent his entire life studying this music and worked with only with black South Africans to create performances that raised awareness about the injustices of apartheid and um, get more people abroad to recognize what was going on and help contribute uh, to tearing down the system that oppressed so many people. But what was uh, really powerful is that after Mandela's death, the Soweto Gospel Choir, who's one of the most famous choral ensembles from South Africa that tours internationally, they did a flash mob of Asimbonanga in a grocery store um, in Johannesburg. And it was the most beautiful tribute to Mandela. And we are going to teach you that arrangement. Um, the thing about this song, it says, uh, this was sung during apartheid, often as a protest song. Um, the words mean, literally, we have not seen our, Ma our Mandela. Um, the place where he, where he is, the places where he stayed. And it's talking about during apartheid, nobody knew where he was, you know, no one got to see him. He was kept in prison for 28 years. Um, and then it says, we say, hey you, hey you, hey you, hey you, and also you. Um, the best way to translate this last line is, uh, when, when will we arrive, when will we arrive at the place that we are going to, our destination, meaning when will we overcome apartheid. Um, and just to give a tiny bit of background, the reason it was so powerful to see this performed in a grocery store is that you had people singing from all different aisles where they couldn't see each other. They could only hear each other. And in so many ways, that's exactly like the experience that many of these leaders of the apartheid struggle had singing in prison. So when they were feeling really beaten down and oppressed and very intentionally kept separate from each other so that they couldn't band together, um, they would sing from their cells. And no matter whether they could see each other or not, all of their voices could join together in their traditional four-part harmony. And it was this way of asserting that you can keep us apart, but you can't destroy our culture, because here it is. It's everywhere, echoing around you. There's even a famous story of um, Vui Silimini, a famous anti-apartheid activist who was murdered by the government. When he was led away to his execution, he had a really strong, beautiful bass voice. And as he was led to the gallows, he started singing one of his most famous songs, and all of the prisoners started to sing with him. And they made very intentional effort that when, in the moment he was executed, the sound did not get at all softer. The voices kept it going. And it was this fabulous statement that no matter what you do, you can't stop the sound of this movement. And so it's funny, because you would think doing it in a grocery store seems kind of like it's cheapening the deep meaning. But it actually wasn't at all, because a lot of people in the country knew exactly what that meant, that singing from the Cheerio aisle versus the fresh vegetable aisles was actually just really symbolic of this being kept apart, but not. So this is Asimbonanga. It's in Zulu. This is the most widely spoken language in South Africa. The good thing about Zulu is it's pretty straightforward in terms of pronunciation. It's not going to be that hard. The thing you want to keep in mind, two things. You want the sound to be a bit darker than how we speak English. And this is just, it's not even about singing so much as just singing models how we speak. So if you see someone in South Africa, you're not like, hey, oh my god, how are you doing? You're like, you molo sisi, unjani namplanje, you kushushu. So you know, everything is a sort of deeper spoken tone. Um, the letters are pretty much the way they, they're pronounced the way they look. 
You'll see apostrophes occasionally. Oftentimes, South Africans, if there's a, a word that ends in a vowel followed by a word that starts with a vowel, you cut off one of the vowels. That's all it is. It doesn't change the pronunciation. So anything in green is going to be sung by the soloist. Anything in black is sung by all of us. So you have this first line, O. Oh, explain. T-O, yeah. T-H's and P-H's. They're not pronounced like English. An H merely adds air. So an H is just signifies that the consonant preceding is aspirated. So like a T without an H would just be T, and a T with an H would be T. So this TH is not TH, it's just T. And the PH is a P. Huh. So don't make it like an F. And the KH is the same, <laughs> Kona as opposed to Kona. Kona, right. So that's all that is. And I think that's, and there's nothing else that's particularly weird. The HL is not a sound we have in our language, but it is literally just as though you said an H and an L next to each other. So yeah. it's shl. Try that. Shl. There'll be some spit. It's fine. You should <laughs> spit on the person in front of you, for sure. Yeah. Shl. It's a great sound. We all need to make that sound more often. So asimbonanga literally means we have not seen him. And then Mandela Tina. Uh, Mandela, you're talking about. Uh, the place where he is, the place where he stayed. Oh, sorry, uhlala, the verb is to stay somewhere. So uh, everyone just say, Asimbonang. Asimbonang. Umande Latina. Umande Latina. La pe cona. La pe cona. La pe cona. La pe cona. Those are good. Now, and in the um, cruel imitation aisle, darker sound. Yeah. There's a way to do that really easily. Oh, yes. Pronounce every, all the vowels as if they're out here. And like your, your lips are extended. Always keep your here. lips in front of so your face. So instead of going, say A. A. And smile. Now say A. 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 Say ah. 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 Oh. 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 It's great. Ah sim bonang. Keep it out yeah, yeah. here. Don't try it too hard to smile. Just. Like, pucker up as if you're kissing a beach ball. <laughs> beach ball. It's got Definitely. a big surface <laughs> right over there. Now say, Asimbona. Asimbonang. Umande Latina. Umande Latina. Nice. Keep it out here. Now, that's an incredible difference. Yeah. Remember this, <laughs> because we don't have a long afternoon. Right. That's your rule for South African. Stay in the beach ball position. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pronounce every, everything there. Don't try to move your mouth yeah. to make bright vowels. We don't need E's. We need E. Mm. We don't need A's. We need A. Uh. Uh. So however the vowel comes out, if you do it in here, we're going to have a uniform sound, and it will sound like five times closer to authentic yeah. just with that. And that's one of the things that we do. We travel. We look at people. When we're listening, we don't just think of the notes, we watch their entire bodies, their mouth, everything. And for the cheat, the, the way to, to, to um, cheat time and learn to sound authentic in the quickest possible manner. So right now, rule one, pucker up. Okay. <laughs> and that's how we'll do this song. And it's perfect for this next phrase. So you're going to say, hey, wena. Hey, wena. Which is literally, hey, you. Uh, and then you get to say, hey, wena, nawe. Hey, when I know it. Sio fika. Nini. Nini. La sia cona. La sia cona. La sia con. La sia con. I think that's it. At the very end, you get to say oh, 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 but that's about it. Okay, so parts. I'm going to teach the sopranos their part first. You should all, you know, listen along and follow. We're going to, this, this song is basically in two sections. There's like an, actually it's in three technically, but we'll get to three later. There's an A section and a B section, and you're going to do A twice, B twice, A twice, B twice, special happy super ending C. Um, so A is this, and the B section starts with CT Hewana. So this is the A section first. And I, we encourage you all at least when we're teaching a part. You can learn all the parts. Learn the parts. Yeah. Sing it. You can sing it in your octave. When we say then only the top voices, you cut it out. Um, that one of the reasons why you would learn all the parts is that you then, you're paying attention. And as we layer the parts, which is adding them on, you're going to know how the different parts work. Because yeah. you're already intimately, you have, have knowledge of that. So feel free, and it also will help you to 
get into this call and response is uh, get practice of imitating so that when it's then your turn, for one thing, you'll be really glad to have the bass part, which is not usually as complicated. So <laughs> learn all those things. What, Let's do a G. Like? Okay. <clears throat> this is called the pitch bite. <laughs> and you can kind of play it like a harmonica, but it's really hard. To Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the soprano part goes like this. And then the solo is going to actually start. And he'll go, And that's our soprano part. Sound good? Well, just try it with me. Anyone who wants to just go for it. Ready? Just write on it. So, solo will go, Asim Bonanga, Asim Bonangu Mandela Tina, La Pecona, La Pecelicona. Alto part. Uh, see. So you guys are going to come on this note. The tenor is going to, sorry, the solo, which is a tenor, is going to end on the note you start on. So the, so the, the mic will go, uh, see, and that's going to be your note. And you're going to go, uh, see, mandela tina, la pecona, la pecelicona. It's gorgeous. Do you want to hear what that sounds like together, the two parts? Do you want to, want to sing alto? You <laughs> are? Yeah. And if yeah. you need, you, you like can sing the high part better. Yeah, Come yeah, here. same thing, you if you feel it. From part to party, from song to song. Yeah, let's do it one more time. So, alto part, here we go right down and end. Asimbanangu mandela tina la pecona la pecelicona. Awesome. Do you want to lead alto and I'll okay. lead soprano? We'll put those two together. Asimbanangu oh. And we're, we're, we're parallel. Yeah. Almost. Asim, totally. Asim. Yep, ready and Asim Mandela Tina La Pecona La Pecelicona. So guys? Yeah, now now guys stop. don't sing, just let them hear hear it up the Asim. octave one more time. Yeah, that was beautiful. Asim. Ready and Asim So the tenor part is really high for you, and I'm going to sing your actual notes, and it's going to sound really low, but only because I'm singing it. And then maybe I'll sing it up the octave if, it, if you, or you guys can sing it for them. Yeah, you sing. So tenor part goes like this. Asimbonangu mandela tina la pecona la pecelicona. So you guys are an octave lower. Yeah. 
Yeah, so listen to Mike sing it because that's actually in your act. No, no, you're doing it. I know, you've never got to sing this part. So yeah, you'll just sing with me. Ah, sim bonangu mandela tina la pecona la pecelicona. So it's in that. Can you sing that note? And if. If you can't, you're a bass. bass. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, not really how it works. Ah, see. Really uh, see. It's really high. And if there are any women uh, who really like singing low, I love this works it. totally for te tenor ladies. This is like the perfect song for like that that alto who's always wanted to sing. Tenor. So just do Asim. Asim again. Asim again. Asim. Asim bonangu. Asim bonangu mandela tina la pecona la pecelicona. You guys do that again, and I'm gonna add the soprano, and then once we're cool, uh, I'll like get those guys in there. Ready? Ready and Asim Bonangu Mandela Tina La Pecona La Pecona Yes, that was awesome. Great. Basses. We're a choir. Right? Yeah. So basses. I have to sing this in my octave first. The, after that, the guys can like do, take over. But it's gonna sound like it's really high, but it's not. Well, it starts high, but it goes like this. So now this is down there in the basement, what we were just teaching the tenors. It's the same, ends up on the same line, but down. I know, I'm like. An octave, which means it's the same notes. But like is it still a G? I may also have made it into a key that I like better. <laughs> Yeah, I made it a little lower. Slightly lower. Just a little bit lower. That's okay. South Africans wouldn't care, but still. Here we go. So, uh, bass again. So we have. Asim bonangu mandela tina la pecona la pecelicona. And then the solo goes. Asim bonanga. Asim bonanga. So the opening is a lot higher, and bass parts than the rest of it, yeah. often have a really huge range. So you have always a tenth uh, see, to show off. Can you try that? No. Yeah, maybe you guys lead that so they know what octave it's in. Uh, see, try that, all of you. Uh, see, and then you go. Asim bonang, and then you're suddenly in comfort range. So yeah, it's a little harder to do the high, but do the high first, and then you're down where it's it's low. Yeah, you guys can just lead lead it. We won't sing just so that they hear it in their octave. Ready and. Asim bonang. I'm soul fudging at you. Yeah. Don't you worry, Patty will sing tenor. It'll all be there. Yeah.
Great. There's more faces. Yeah. Can we all, the only problem is, yeah. You might have to sing both the solo and the bass part, okay. which will be awesome. Can, can we It'll be um, fabulous. try the tenor and the bass together? Because we, we start differently, but then uh, we slide into octaves so that we'll sing the same yeah, that's thing true. higher and lower. So, um, I'll sing Bonanga, so that, sing. that's the note that the, ten, the solo ends up on. And the tenors will go down and then up to there, I'll sing. And the basses will go. Ah, see. Can we do that? Ah, ah. So we're going to do ah, see. Ah, see. And we'll go ah, see, bonang. Ah, see, bonang. Can we do that much? Ah, see, bonang. Yeah. And when we're in an octave, you want to kind of shake hands with and tune it <laughs> so it's, it sounds good to the ear. And then we're going to do the rest of that all in uh, parallel octaves. Yeah, do let's do those two words. Ah, seem. Ah, seem. Here we go. Oh. Yay! Ah, seem. Bonang umande latina la pe cona la pe so let's do the, just the bottom three parts. Ah, uh, see, ah, uh, see, ah, uh, see. Ready, right on it, and ah, uh, uh, see. Bonang umande latina la pe cona la pe delicona. All four parts. Ah, uh, see. Ready? And I see So there are not as many sopranos. Come out, and you also have, it's such a beautiful line. So you want to um, not be shy and sing into here where we're all going to mix. And you want to be able to hear your part against everyone else. So altos. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, like, sing it at me like you're a wall of sound right now. <laughs> no. Asim bonang. No. Asim bonang. Yeah. <laughs> that's a hard thing. I, that's I know. Asim bonang umande latina la pe cona la pe gelicona. Match them. Oh, I'm stealing Asim. you all into the choirs. Okay, here we go. Asim. Yeah. So at least as loud. Yeah. Here we go. Just yeah, let's just do upper three. Can we add one of Add the basses first. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to sing the bass part one time by yourself? Yeah. Let's just remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. I see. 
All four parts ready and. Okay. the harmony just like so you can listen do you want to do you want to uh alta sure you can yes. both bass yeah. tenor <laughs> we're just five of us patty can just pick apart <laughs> that's our g right So that's what it sounds like. Tell us how the A part goes. So, our solo, you're, you're gonna be the dual like solo yes. bass. I love this. Tenor solo and bass <laughs> singer. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I love these people. So, <laughs> so um, just fresh G one more time. So Mike will start and he'll go, Mike will go, Asimbonanga, and then we all come in. Asimbonanga, one day Latina, la pega, na 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 na. Asimbonanga, Asimbonanga, one day Latina, la pega, na 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 Then he's gonna go, Siti he wena, and he's gonna point. He's gonna, Siti he wena. Hey you, hey you. Yup. And basses are gonna go, Hey wena, hey wena. And you guys are gonna go. You're gonna point like four times. Hey, when I know where Lasia Con, Lasia Con, and he'll go, City, hey, when I, and you go, Hey, when I, hey, when I, hey, when I know where Siofiganini Lasia Con, Lasia Con. So then you go like right down the scale. So without us, though. Yep. Back up to the high note. Back up to that note. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's do G-sharp for the rest. Yeah, G-sharp works for us nicely. Um, Altos, you're going to be almost in parallel octaves with them this time. So you're going to go in the, the range I'm singing in. Hey, when, uh, just like they do, but an octave up. And then, hey, the only difference is you're going to go, hey, when, uh, na, we, sio, fi, canini, la, sia, con, la, sia, con. So it's almost the whole way parallel until that ending. Um, Hey when I then hey when I know where so fica ni so on ni you go up ni ni la sia con la sia con so ti hey hey when I hey when I hey when I hey when I know where so fica ni ni la sia con la sia con si ti hey So it's for both parts. It's um, hey when I know and the reason that's cool is that is not the next closest harmony note that you would think to go to, but it's a very traditional Zulu harmony. And the, the movement of the parts there, it's actually really quite cool that they did it this way because they kind of avoided doing the more sort of commercialized version that they could have done and stuck to real traditional Zulu harmonies, which ends up moving in what we call parallel fifths and fourths, which is 
technically illegal in Western classical music. So it's sort of this, it's so funny, but you wouldn't think this, but like the use of certain intervals is in itself an act of resistance. I love it. This is why music theory is the best thing in the world. It's awesome. It's another story. So anyway, parallel fits forever. Okay, so, so everyone just do that. Hey, when, na, na, way. Cause we all do that right in. Hey, way, na, na, way. And then we just go back to the note we were on before. Exactly. And the rest of it's just fun. Yeah. Do you want, should we add? Yeah. So you don't sing parallel octaves, which is kind of fun. But but your part's going to be pretty predictable. Yeah, it's all like in the little little D. Should we put the should we put the bass and the tone together? City when 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 I didn't tell you the um, the order of uh, rules of engagement for choirs, but you're doing it naturally. First is to be there. That's most important. Mm -hmm. Second is to get the right note. Mm -hmm. Third is to get the right vowel. And next to get the right consonant. If there are multiple consonants, you can add consonants. In Georgian, you'll sometimes there are so four many. or five consonants in a row before you get to a vowel. But everyone is there. That's awesome. It's so good. If you find, as you're singing, that you hear that you're not exactly with our ringers on that note, it's likely that you have not yet found the proper note. And the next time, you try to get closer to that note. But yeah. keep being there. It's so Never good. Never be quiet. Yeah. And, and also, if you're wrong, it's better to be wrong and strong than timid. <laughs> right and quiet. Right and right. No, and you just right. want to be right and strong too. But just be be there and strong and um, with chutzpah. Yeah. And, but then also listen to yourself. <laughs> if you hear that you're not doing what the the models are, then the next pass, try to try to figure out how to do that. That's good. Should we add the altos? Mm-hmm. That's our Hey when uh, Hey when uh, And you guys have Hey when uh, Okay. <laughs> Remember that after the hey wanna you'll be singing. Hey, oh, you're, you're singing the hey wanna in octaves with the altos. If you're strong, you help the basses, and if you're strong, you help the singers. We just wanted to play too. I'm sorry. We were being jealous. That's all. We'll start other songs with the sopranos. I know it's true. I always start every song with the sopranos because I'm a soprano, and then I was like, oh, I just have to make that.
Okay, so they're gonna go C T A when I'm with Hey when na Hey when na Hey when I'm with So we can in the second la second C T A when I Hey when na Hey when na Altos and surprises? Yeah. How can I have the altos sing like this? Hey, when I'm uh, not hey, when I'm uh, hey. Yeah, remember you were saying, hey, you. Yeah. Okay? So really come out. Do that again. Yes. CT, hey, when I'm uh, hey, when I'm uh, hey, when I'm uh, hey, when uh, hey, strength, it enables us to really find our place and the basses to find their place because we can tune off of you and we can hear you. And besides, it sounds so amazing. Isn't that an amazing difference? It's like, sing out. And um, that's what singing is. Not here. It's to, it's to become a group. If you're a solo singer, a bathroom singer, you're singing, you know, in this little tube. Otherwise, catchy public transportation give it. singer. <laughs> Give it out and you get so much back. So, shall we try it? All four? Five? Four. There's four. Four parts. <coughs> Math. City Hewen. 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 That's two thirds of the song. You know what? I don't think we need the third part. I think we can just do it with the first two. Let's do it. Yeah, I think we're not gonna do the third part because I think the first two parts are, yeah, I think the first two parts are gonna be good. Then we're good. As just the so first two. So form, form. What we'll do is we'll just alternate. So we'll do two times A, two times B, two times A, two times B, and then we'll come back to A. As and you understand ending. when we're saying A and B, right? No. Okay. Before. No. Okay, so because um, the, yeah. the the like C section is not actually traditional. It's like added on by the Soweto Gospel Choir, and it's not really it's not really necessary. So um, customarily, when you're teaching uh, like dance, there'll be an A part and a B part. Um, instrumental music, if you want to uh, uh, give an idea of the form, often you'll have repeat science. You know, you, there are these funny little things with dots like that and that's <laughs> too many like dots. that I don't know lots many of dots, dots. <laughs> too many dots dots all Just over lots the of dots and um, that means you repeat that <laughs> and that will be a <laughs> section <laughs> and so that's what we're doing here we're repeating that section with a call and response and we'll do that a part two times so after we do you get it and then then the CT hey when uh, after we get to the end. You don't like that? But, but, they, but, 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 okay. What is that? Fine. Fine. That was like so many repeats. No, I'm just kidding. Let's repeat. And then we'll repeat this part. It's like having a CEO and a COO. Right? Right, right, totally. No, we, we think it's complimenting. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> Tension and slightly different viewpoints. <laughs> An artistic ability, the ability to draw. Oh, I don't have that. That's a thing. <laughs> but I, uh, A and B, we're not fighting about that. So those are the A's. <laughs> and what's, what's interesting is, the truth is, it doesn't, you can make forms all you want in advance. But if we're truly being authentic, um, South Africans love to pretend that they're making a form. Like, they'll be like, oh, before the concert, they'll be like, okay, two times A, two times B, then we go to the A section, then we do this, and we add this movement, and then, and like, literally, you get up there and they start a different song. You know, it's like, <laughs> whatever it was that you thought you were doing is totally gone. And, um, and the beauty of that is the spontaneity of just having to follow. But, so whatever the soloist does, like if, if Mike is singing this opening and he's just like having a moment and wants to sing the A section, He'll I don't know, five more times, and you have to echo him. <laughs> you just keep <laughs> asking over and, over and, over. and then this one is, when you hear that, we do that. So it doesn't matter what we say. Yeah, it's up to the solo. It is. And what's so interesting about this song in terms of like this concept of leading and following, one thing that I think, I mean, I don't know if this is true for you, but uh, in, in my world, um, whether that be music or elsewhere, uh, in areas where I feel strongest, the hardest thing I, that I have to be able to do is to let go and allow the people who I'm working with to lead themselves and not lead them when they don't need it anymore. Um, and that letting go is so hard. I mean, it, it really is. It's like, it's like physically painful. And yet, then you watch that once you step away, you're creating a space in which other people can take leadership of themselves. And that is a great, it's an incredible gift to watch that happen. So there's this element of like, of like stepping back in a way that is leadership because you're allowing other people to lead. But then the opposite is like, when am I not the leader, but I have to help lead by following really well, you know? And that's what ends up happening with the dynamic in this song. Mike might start the B section and go, city when not, right? And he's, he's calling out the audience, right? Hey, you. Like, what are you doing to help with this struggle, right? But it's actually our response to him leading that is the real leadership. Because depending on how we respond to him, that's going to show where the power is in this. It's going to say it's not just one person standing up and leading. It's because that leader is in prison. We don't even have him anymore. It's what we're going to do that's going to matter. So then when we echo him, hey, when I, and we like shock the audience with our power, and then he steps up again, hey, when I, it all is this, this call and response is both leading and following at the same time. And I hope that when we're doing it, and once you like know the notes and aren't worried about that, that you feel this weird sort of back and forth between like, am I leading or am I following? Or am I actually leading in the way that I'm following? And am I following in the way that I'm leading? And it's like, woo, you know? But really, it does translate so literally into everything. Like we do these things in our rehearsals and we go right into everyday life and we're like, Oh, yeah, what I just did in that song, that's what I need to do right now in this setting. And it's, they're just directly connected. It's, it's kind of frightening. OK, so um, that was a really long answer to how are we doing the song. So we'll do, let's pretend we're going to do uh, you know, A twice, B twice, A twice, B twice. We could also have someone else lead if they wanted to and sing the solo after you've heard it a bunch of times so that you can also get a sense of how does the choir respond to different voices? We can even do that right now just so you can feel it. Like, Patty, do you wanna do, you wanna do um, the solo for the first A, two A's and two B's, and then when we come back, Mike takes sure. it over? Sure. Yeah, so we have a variety. We're ready. Do you wanna travel our hearts? Yeah. It goes a little slower than that. We were just like, you know, making it fast to we go through that? the parts. Yes, yeah. please do. And we'll try not to stand in front of the board. Ish. <laughs> so now, on Hewena, I don't care what arm. Take an arm and you're going to point to the imaginary audience, which is if now the If we whiteboard. stand on either side of the board, would you be willing to put your papers down and only look at these words? So you can. You can move a little. There's no real 
dance, but you can kind of keep a beat. But also, this hewena, not. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, if there's room when? between the chairs. We figured it out that yeah, way. Yeah. You can go, hey, 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 hey. And it really helps to choose somebody in this arch to hey. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're going to do the whole thing twice. Okay, we're ready. We have many chances for redemption. <laughs> Asimbolanga. Wait, can we do can we do slower though? <laughs> yes. We don't need to know fast anymore. We can do Asim. Okay. No, I mean, no, but for real, like how we'll do it. Yeah. We're gonna do two notes. Asimbolanga. Asimbolanga. I love the going up at the end. I'll see you. Just the very last one. Ready? I'll see Jasmine. That was awesome. So have a seat for a moment. Take a moment to reflect. Uh, it's definitely Corsica next. Um, 
So was that like your typical, you know, Saturday afternoon? No. Sunday? What is today? It's Saturday. It is Saturday. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Um, any, any, like, any, what are you feeling? Anything? Awesome. Yeah? <laughs> Woohoo! I love it. How does it feel to be kind of outside your comfort zone? I'm assuming it is. I don't know. Yeah. Some of you is look it? really comfortable, actually. Actually, I wouldn't know because you all look and you really, you know, the truth is when you, you, and you all did the, hey, why not, you bought into it 100%. And I have to tell you, there's nothing more soul crushing than doing this with a choir where they're like meek about that moment. And they're like, they let the self-consciousness get in the way of the message of the song. And it is so important. This song is a little, uh, it's a little uncomfortable because you are actually confronting an audience, you know? You're like, hey, you, like you, you and you. No, literally not like just you, but you and you and you. Like, when are we going to, when is this gonna change, you know? And it's, um, and it's, it starts with you. I mean, that's that, that right. message. It's, it's pretty pertinent. It is, and so having people really buy into it is so awesome. It's so great, yeah. Um, we, we actually did a concert together last night and we had a number of, this particular concert just had a number of like songs that pushed the boundaries of, of uh, emotional response. And it's, it's very interesting to sort of watch singers grapple with when they know that a certain song is gonna make them cry and like how they're gonna deal with it. And I usually don't have that problem, but for some reason this year I do for the first time, everything makes me cry and I'm like in rehearsal trying to hold it together. And it's, it's really, it is amazing. I mean, it's such a, again, it's one of those things where I'm sure this is true with the business world, like the music world. You can plan and anticipate exactly how you're going to respond to everything in the moment. You can be so well thought out in advance, so well planned. You know exactly what you want. You know how you want something to go. You know the structure for something. But then in the moment, having that spontaneous being, allowing yourselves to be moved in some way and go in a different direction. And that happens just all the time in music. And in the next genre that we're going to share with you is actually kind of all about that.